Crystal microphones and ceramic mics. Crystal and ceramic microphones were once popular because they were inexpensive and their high impedance, uh, high level output allowed them to be connected directly to the input of home tape recorders with high input impedance using short mic cables. So your those older microphones, I we had well. See, when I was rehearsing bands in the '60s, we used to have these old mono Revere tape recorders. That was before the cassette was invented. God, that's a long time. Anyways, because we couldn't record our rehearsals. It was, you know, we didn't do that because they sounded terrible, number one. Coming through that little crystal mic, that made it sound even worse. And the speed was uh, three and three quarters or seven and a half, which doesn't give you any kind of really good sound reproduction. So we didn't start recording rehearsal until the end of the 60s. I think it was... 68 or 69 when Sony comes out with this cassette recorder concept and I bought this cassette deck that it could be either be played portable on a battery or plugged into the wall or I could have RCA outs and put it into a system and play it back through a, a system or it could play back through its own speakers so it was a complete useful tool for all of us so we could have that little microphone that came with it record the rehearsal listen to what we did and say boy that sucked. <laughs> Let's not do that again. You know? uh, but it was, wasn't until the end of the 60s that you could do that. Now, God, I'm recording this right now on this little device, which is the latest and the greatest. This is a Zoom recorder. It costs 200 bucks. It's the same price I paid for that cassette in 1970. It's digital. It's recording onto an SD chip, 4 gig. And... Uh, I'm, I'm recording at 44.1 right now. Digital, I, I, I can put this in front of the band and record the whole rehearsal and get a doggone master quality if I wanted to. So this crystal and ceramic microphones, like I say, were the older tape recorders. And at the time, uh, but boy, the way they work is pretty strange. Uh, high level output, yeah, but they operate using the piezoelectric effect of crystals. A crystal, if you, the piezoelectric effect is when crystals, crystals, if you alter or bend a crystal, it creates a current. That's the piezoelectric effect. Uh, uh, piezo, in which certain materials generate an electrical signal when they are physically stressed and is a property of certain ceramics and crystals like Rochelle salt, tourmaline, beranium tan uh, uh, tantanite, and quartz. The frequency response is limited, normally 80 hertz to 6500 hertz. But by, by attaching the diaphragm to the crystal, when the diaphragm vibrates, it alters the, it puts stress on the crystal, and the crystal creates a current. Now a lot of the, a lot of times you say, why would they have? The country usually Accurate, where is the sound waves or actuating process? Well, a lot of times, a microphone like that uh, really does well in moisture. You know, moisture doesn't hurt it, whereas you couldn't use an electrical microphone in, in, in moisture because as soon as any kind of moisture got to it, it would put it out. So if you're in the foxhole, you know, and the bad guys are coming over the hill, and you want to call for the jet people to come and help you out, you don't want a Neumann $2,000 know, doggone condenser microphone to do the job. You want a microphone that's going to work in the mud. Well, then you'd use that microphone, the microphone that works in the mud, you know. So that's why there's different kind of microphones that work in different places. Okay.